Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the National COVID-19 Outdoor Learning Initiative's Community of Practice for Schools and Districts Moving Learning Outside. We're honored to welcome our colleague, Gerardo Salazar, to be our guest speaker today. Jerry is the Administrator for the Office of Outdoor and Environmental Education for the Los Angeles Unified School District in Los Angeles, California. I had the pleasure of meeting Jerry about five years ago when we both served on the California Environmental Literacy Task Force, and I'm thrilled to have him here today. His office at LAUSD offers programs at two residential outdoor science schools and seven single day field trip sites. All students within the school district are eligible to participate at no charge in these wonderful K-12 programs. Under Jerry's leadership, participation in the environmental literacy and science and engineering programs has increased from 8,800 to 37,600 students uh, over the last five years, which is amazing. And today he'll be sharing a new program with us that was started this year to address the pandemic. It's called the LAUSD Skyhook Ecoban Program. In addition to his work with LAUSD, Jerry is also the current chair of the California Outdoor Schools Association and serves on several advisory councils for federal and state initiatives related to education and the environment. Please join me in giving Jerry a warm welcome. Good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, assuming it's still good morning here in the West Coast, and if it's not uh, where you're at, well, good afternoon. Hi. Uh, I, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and uh, once I share the screen, I, I'm going to walk you through our website so you, I could show you more or less what it is. I don't want to read a, a PowerPoint to you all, but I do want to show you so so that we get the scope of what we're doing. Uh, Sharon did a wonderful job of explaining it, but I do think that it will be it gives us it gives a background of the philosophy of what we why we do what we do so it explains the why quite a bit so let's look at our programs and just a really quick overview on the programs part on the tab right there you'll see that's that's our clear creek outdoor education center and that's where we take kids from all over la unified school district we're about 715 miles in terms of our our district boundaries over a thousand schools and just about a little bit over half a million students. So we're approximately 10% of the school age population for the state of California. So we have, we do have a, a cross section of many cultures. We speak uh, over 90 languages in Los Angeles Unified. And, and as you could probably imagine, uh, we have some very high income areas and we have some very low income areas. Approximately 75% of our students qualify for the free and reduced lunch program. About 30% of our students are English language learners and long-term English language learners. So our programs really impact kids, especially when we, where we have uh, dense urban population areas. These, uh, for example, like downtown Los Angeles, West Los Angeles, um, there are some outskirts in the suburbs where we do have kids that have more access to more uh, outdoor spaces than the ones in the, in, in the inner city. But you could imagine that most of our schools are in the inner city. The, um, our programs are at, uh, if you look at, uh, we have Camp Skyhook. Uh, if you scroll down, Sharon, you'll see the button right there. And you'll, I'm not going to ask you to do that. Um, you could all do this on your own at, if you wish. But the um, Camp Skyhook at Clear Creek is, um, we just renamed it Camp Skyhook because of our relationship with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the basketball player, and his foundation. It's called the Skyhook Foundation. They donate funds to us every year. And of course, Kareem has been a wonderful uh, ambassador for our program. We couldn't buy the publicity he's giving us. And recently, he was a, 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 the, the National Basketball Association named a, uh, an award in his honor. So um, the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Humanitarian Award is given to a basketball player that is um, very active in the community. The next point, or the next one we have is Point Furman Outdoor Education Center, and uh, which is in San Pedro, adjacent to the water. So Clear Creek is at, at, in the mountains, Point Furman's by the ocean. And we decided that our day of discovery programs was going to focus primarily for the young ones from K through third grade is, is our focus. So when they come to an outdoor residential camp, they know how to take advantage of those opportunities and they, they are already familiarized with the inquiry process in the outdoors. 
So we start them at TK, transitional kindergarten, and uh, up to third, and then fourth and fifth through eighth grade, they have the option to go to the, um, to the outdoor residential science schools, the overnight ones at, camp, at our campsites. And then we have our great outdoor science programs. We call it Go, Go Science. And those are funded through Title I, and those are weekend programs. Both of our campsites right now are for the 2021-22 uh, year are um, scheduled to be operating seven days a week. So we have kids coming in Monday, they leave Friday at Clear Creek, and then kids, another group of kids coming in Friday, leaving Sunday. At Point Furman, we have uh, three sets of kids coming in. So Monday to Wednesday, Wednesday to Friday, Friday to Sunday. So we're constantly bringing kids in and out of our of our venues. Hi. So so the um, every single one of our programs is uh, free or no charge to the schools and or the students. Which brings us to the eco vans. So the eco vans themselves were were the brainchild of just desperation on our part. We we just like everyone else, we started when COVID hit in March. We started creating a lot of online based curriculum, and we noticed uh, we we did some with our partners. And uh, the most notable curriculum was the the partnership with the Battleship Iowa and UCLA. In that case, in that particular situation, the Iowa, which is now a museum on the port in the port of Los Angeles, we decided to recreate a um, the engineering design process. Actually, the host the Navy hospital ship Mercy docked fantail to fantail to the Iowa. So we asked the kids if we needed more hospital space, because at that time uh, nobody knew what COVID was and or how bad it was going to get. Everybody was worried about hospital space. So we asked the kids to reimagine the Iowa and redesign it to be a hospital ship, just like the Navy, the Navy Hospital Mercy. So that was that was a hit. All the other ones were pretty well received, but we noticed that everybody else was making was writing curriculum and posting it online. So there was a we didn't want to add more and more curriculum when there was some pretty good stuff already being produced. So we noticed that the kids, um, some of the things that we were, I was hearing is that a lot of kids are indoors. They don't, many of our kids live in apartment buildings and they, the schools are closed. So a lot of their um, ability to, to interact with, with their classmates or even possibly even leave a bad situation at home. So to many kids in our in our school district, to some of our kids, uh, the situation at home is not good. So going to school is a way to es an escape for a while. So what we wanted to do is um, really, at some point, interface with the kids. Unfortunately, our schools were closed. So we decided that uh, since our schools were closed, we needed to find out where are they going because a lot of kids are not signing in or had problems with technology signing in because of the uh, lack of internet. We found out that the um, Los Angeles, the city of Los Angeles was hosting kids at their parks to be able to sign in in large auditoriums or, or, or gyms that they have. And they were one kid to a device, six feet apart, all that kind of good stuff. And they had, uh, they, they were able to provide breakfast, lunch, and a supper snack for these kids that were walking from their homes to sign in to class for the day. So that was, a, I felt that was our opportunity to interface with the kids. Uh, so we took some of our old vans and we packed them up with uh, a lot of our artifacts and, and things that we had, um, a lot of our lessons that we had at Clear Creek and at Point Perman and started visiting these sites. Um, the city of Los Angeles, to my shock and surprise was actually very welcoming. And I'm not saying that because they haven't been in the past. I was shocked because they were so meticulous about their COVID protocols that I didn't think they would want us to come in and mess it all, mess it all up for them. But they were very welcoming and, and uh, we were able to, uh, it was a wonderful partnership between city and district. 
we were able to visit 63 of these sites. And I'm going to give you a little bit, uh, if we go to the video, if you click, it gives you the why, and we're gonna play it for about 90 seconds. So it gives you the background, it reminds us what it was like back then, and, and you're, gonna, you're going to see what Clear Creek was like and what the kids were missing out on and what we were trying to replicate at a city park. What we, we did two major um, shifts or adjustments to our programming because since we're an outdoor education program, we couldn't be in front of kids anymore because kids couldn't get on a bus and kids were not at the school. So we had to figure out a different way of interfacing with them. So in addition to the eco vans, we decided to also create uh, video field trips. So our first video field trip was to Catalina Island. And we're filming these video field trips from the perspective of kids. It, it, the format was very simple. We would show them the site where wherever we're visiting, in this case, the first video was Catalina Island, why we're visiting the site, introduce the, the, the travelers, in this case, they were kids. And then we would, we would film the kids going on their activities or adventures. In the, in the first episode, kids were, in a, um, were snorkeling in a kelp forest and we had all manner of cameras underwater. And, and being, being that we are here in Los Angeles, people who were experts in underwater photography and videography volunteered their time uh, to do that because everything went back then was at a standstill, nobody was working. So they figured, okay, let's do some good and um, donate some time to the district and they did. We were asked to produce eight more episodes. So each of these episodes, it's 30 minutes long. And these became video field trips while the kids were at home. Teachers decided they wanted to use them. So this is why we have these videos for the kids. And this is our second video, which is on the eco vans. In Los Angeles, the nation's second largest school district will now close. We got the announcement that schools will be shutting down effective Monday. Monday, March 16th, they will all be closed to students. It really and truly is unprecedented. Health experts were warning that it was all but inevitable. Massive impact for all the children now spending the school day at home. We're now at a point where the balance has shifted and the appropriate path is to close schools. It was like a avalanche of questions. How long would this go on? And obviously, how was it going to affect our programming and, and the ability for staff to keep working? There was concern. Um, how long is this going to last? Um, my first thought was, what does a naturalist do from home? When the pandemic started, uh, it, the future looks sort of bleak for uh... all right so that was that was a uh, tack more of a teaser but it, it gave a, it, it gives people always like to look at that and say that's um now that we're recovering from covid sometimes it people go back to that video to remember what that was like 
what led to a lot of the actions that at, as a school district, as teachers, as administrators, we took. I saw in the chat was this pre-COVID. Uh, the what we what you saw right there was for, was mostly B-roll from about a year before COVID actually um, affected everybody. So that was what our camp used to look like pre-COVID. And then obviously the um, the rest of the video is 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 filmed in a COVID in the COVID world. So. In the case of, of uh, the eco vans, that's what drove our, our decision. How can we pro keep providing some semblance of what we, we provided at camp? We were not going to replace, the idea was not to replace a five day camp experience with a, with a traveling science program. That was gonna be impossible. So when the, when the uh, eco vans show up, we, we, do, um, we do know that when the kids the kids see us showing up uh, in these vans. At the time, we were in these old vans. We would have to take everything out, um, the, the uh, you know, in order to set up our tables and 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 activities and investigations. Highly inconvenient, and we were driving our vans so hard and for uh, so long. The distances here in LA are pretty long. We have, like I said, our district is 715 miles in terms of its territory. So you can go from San Pedro to Clear Creek, which is approximately 45 miles. I actually know it's 65 miles from one to the other. So, and sometimes that's the, that's the drive I have to make um, in order to go visit both of the sites. So the, um, our vans gave out. Uh, one of them had complete engine failure. And then the, uh, another one of our vans was decommissioned because the brakes went out, which is uh, brakes are highly, um, I advise, cars to have brakes. Um, so the, um, at that point I called, I called the Skyhook Foundation and told them, listen, we're in this, we're in this, we have this problem. Our vans are keep either, one of them is completely got engine, engine failure and is not going to be replaced. And the other, the other two that we have are not, they're constantly being repaired. So now our staff is, they're using their personal cars. They are, I, I'm, I'm extremely lucky to have some very committed staff on my team. Our naturalists and our part-timers put stuff in their own cars and took them to the parks, which to me was unacceptable uh, for them to be doing and putting so many, mile, so many miles in their own personal vehicles. So the um, Skyhook Foundation, once they received my call, they, they, they knew what we were doing. And about three days later, they, they call me back and say, um, yeah, we'll get you some vans. Uh, what kind would you like? And at that point, um, we were able to go crazy and say, hey, uh, we, we really would like is these things that Amazon is making all of its deliveries on and have them customized. Um, you know, if I could dream, you know, that's what we would like. And they were able to uh, commit to giving us four of them. So I'm going to give you, show you. Um, so this is when the, the first eco van was um, was dedicated. It was uh, Mayor Mayor Garcetti was at the ceremony, um, and and again, Karima Dojabar and Mayor Garcetti were, were at the dedication ceremony, and that gave us a great deal of of uh, I guess what we would call uh, street cred, and and people wanted us to come to their parks um, because this was a collaboration with the city. Of course, the mayor was going to be there, and. Um, in this case, you're looking at the hydrosphere van. We, since we received four of these vans, these the four of these customized vans, each van was named after one of Earth's Earth systems. One of Earth's systems, yeah, the tongue twister. So one of these Earth systems, and uh, so this is a hydrosphere. There was atmosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere are the other ones, and we linked them to the globe protocols. GLOBE stands for Global Learning and Observation to Benefit the Earth. And those are initiatives, that's an initiative that was uh, brought forth by NOAA and by, by NASA. In our particular case, we work very closely with Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and they are the ones that provided the professional development for our staff to be able to, to uh, explore these uh, protocols and write our lessons and curriculum based on those protocols. So in this case, the hydrosphere, you're going to have a lot of, of um, 
activities and investigations based on the hydrosphere, of course. Now, when a school receives a visit by the hydrosphere van, they are not going to see that van uh, um, again. The hydrosphere rear van, the hydrosphere van would visit the uh, park for about a week or three three days to a week, and then the follow in about a month, you would have the biosphere van show up. So that we don't want to replicate and have kids say, "Oh, we already did that." Kids love to say that. So we don't want to be uh, guilty of, of presenting the same activity to them twice. So as a result, we had 16, 16 times five different uh, activities for them to do. So at that point, the um, uh, you see Kareem and, and Mayor uh, Garcetti, that's Mayor Garcetti there with, with the van. And you'll see in the back of the van, there's a, there's a picture there with all of, all of the sponsors. So the, um, the Skyhead Foundation has uh, many, many relationships in the business community and also in the uh, sports community. So you see the Laker logo there. The Lakers are very much involved in, in, in what we do. Verizon also uh, made these vans, uh, they put equipment in there so that they're 5G capable. And they also have donated 25 iPads per van. So that's over, uh, that's, that's about hundred iPads for the four vans. Um, and uh, we're still trying to figure out how we're gonna use them because the last thing I want is the kids to see a screen. So far, what we're doing is using those iPads for surveys. So very quick surveys, and then also for the kids to take pictures of different investigations and save them and hopefully send them to themselves for, for later use in, in a classroom setting or possibly just for them to, to be enthused and learn more about whatever it is that they're excited about. So the, the Skyhook Foundation, as a result of this work with the uh, Ecovans, received a national award. Um, one of the uh, sponsors was Panasonic. So Panasonic Corporation, in, 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 in addition to the Skyhip Foundation, received a, the, global, the Global Sustainability Award. And it was really interesting because we were, our name was entered. I never thought we would win, but it was um, quite a feat. But because uh, by that time we had already visited 60 of the uh, school of the um, of the park centers that we had committed to at least one time we so each 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 park had been visited by at least one band one time the other interesting piece of this is that by that time this was by the way in october you know in october things were hot and cold with the with the with covid and um, we were towards the point where in november by November, things were getting really, um, you know, it was just after Halloween. COVID was starting to spike again, and our staff kept going. To uh, we were we were following very strict protocols, and we found out that even though our science curriculum was very very solid, we needed to focus more on mental health and on and on wellness. And what we've done in the past, basically, the activities that we've done in the past is how to leverage the outdoors for mental well-being and, and physical well-being. So we noticed we started really focusing more time on the mental health, mental wellness and started working with, the, with UCLA and their uh, UCLA arts and healing program. And also with Kaiser Permanente in terms of their mental health. So they came and did a PD, a virtual PD of our team. Our, our team has already uh, is already accustomed to working with with uh, foster youth and homeless youth. There are approximately 6,000 identified homeless youth in our district, and in an additional, I believe, 8,000 students in the foster care system in our district. So we are accustomed to working with many of these populations, and we just wanted to make sure that we were able to um, to serve them well. So if we go, if we scroll up a little bit. So social distancing, that's, some, one, that's, some, that's Judy, one of our natural issues, doing a breathing exercise now with them. And what we also try to do is uh, do some visualization and movement. Uh, we do also in the parks, if the park is large enough, our naturalists will get there early enough so that we could do a wellness hike with the kids. And if there's um, some learning opportunities for the kids, they will identify different spots that, you know, as teachers do, they will find an opportunity wherever they see it. So in this case, they're doing an investigation. And, and I believe that that looks like a hydrosphere investigation 
they're looking at, I believe, different types of dyes that end up because they a lot of kids will look at a creek and think that the water is clear. Well, they look under a microscope and they find out there's a bunch of little organisms swimming around um, that are not visible to the naked eye. So we are trying to mimic that particular activity in this one at the park site. And some of the water we bring, we actually bring it from the creek. So that's not, we tell the kids, that's not drinking water. So, um, so they, are, they, are, they know where it's from. We show them on the map where it's at, in, at Clear Creek, where Clear Creek is at. We also have used it where we bring ocean water from nearby Point Furman. And Judy is, uh, I don't know what she's doing there. So, so um, but these are some of the activities. Again, everything is outdoors and keep going. Please. Once something is touched, either the kids keep it or it's set aside and sanitized and left the, and set to the side for 72 hours. And it's still the case. In this case, I believe they're doing owl pellet dissections. So yeah, that's what they're doing. Um, I believe that might be biosphere. As you, as, well, of course it's owl pellet. There's an owl there. So there we go. Yeah, so um, the owl pellets are really popular. <laughs> you, you get, we talk a lot about the urban, urban raptors and urban birds of prey. Here in Los Angeles, we have a large population of owls here in LA, but also peregrine falcons are native to the area as well as red tailed hawk. And a lot, there's some, I've been, I've been um, witness to a couple of really interesting conversations where kids um, have actually uh, discouraged their parents from, let's say, buying some of the rat bait and, and um, uh, to, to kill or to take care of, uh, of, of rats and mice in their homes because the kids are aware now that, that these animals, that these uh, rats will eat the, the bait and then they will be eaten by the, by the hawk or the birds of prey and create some real badness. So that, that's the, the, the word that the kids use. So um, it creates a, a great deal of awareness, of awareness and advocacy on their part towards their parents. Yeah. I'm wondering if we can give, a, give people a chance to ask some questions that what you're presenting sure. is awesome. And I, I know that there are C questions in the chat about details and I just wanna make sure we have a chance for them to, to ask. So maybe we can go to, to Q&A if that's okay and that you can bring out. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do it, let's do it. Awesome, thanks. So I saw, let's see, feel free I to see. add questions to the chat. And I saw questions about, there was one comment about resonating with what you said about screens um, and and how people can be citizen scientists using iNaturalist too. Other, do others have questions that you want to to ask it, about? It, yeah, in regards to the, the, the screens and citizen science, uh, yeah, we do have, we did install the, the, the GLOBE, the NASA GLOBE uh, version of the, of the citizen science. On, on our iPads and we started doing that again. But what the kids really needed was the mental health piece of it, the mental and the social emotional learning. That was what really resonated with the kids more. And we noticed that, that our attendance grew and the kids wanted to stay longer to the point where when the kids found out that, they, that we were going to show up, they would tell their parents to, uh, don't, not to pick them up early. They would tell the parents to pick them up, pick me up at six or six thirty. You know, when when the by the when the bands leave, the, and it was and the big switch was towards the social emotional learning and the and the um, wellness activities. That's awesome. It sounds like such such wonderful enrichment. And um, let's see, we have a a comment here from Elena saying we've moved from calling it citizen science to community science because many of our students and their families. Uh, are not citizens uh, learning from the Urban Ecology Center in Milwaukee. That's a really interesting um, and perspective that makes a lot of sense. Uh, that's that's a great point. Yeah, but but we in our case we just call them the NASA protocol, so they just do them all. So yeah, it, it, but that's that's good to be mindful of. Yeah, I use that term too, and I'll, I'll think about it that way differently um, as yeah. well. Great point. Um, let's see. Lots of great comments about the health and well-being being important, community aspects of this. Sharon, I have a quick question, um, yeah. which was I put in the chat about, like, please advise on, like, how to do this with my district, because I think if I heard this correctly, Gerardo, uh, that you, um, as working for Skyhook, you've connected with the Los Angeles Unified School District 
And I was just wondering how did you, I mean, I know you went over that, but like, how would I go about doing something similar to that with my district? Okay, so I am an employee of LA Unified School District. We have been working with the Skyhook Foundation for the <laughs> with them. Uh, we have a, a relationship for uh, almost a decade now. In regards to doing something at your school district, um, we would, I would say we could start small. The, the important piece here, the vans are, are you know, they, they're, they make an impression when they show up and they're really cool, but the program is not the vans. The program is the activities and the people, right? So the, the vans just give, give us the marketing and, and, and the awareness and, 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 and the Sky Foundation is very much aware of it, aware of that. So they have they have given us a great deal of support with with the uh, with the um, with the supplies, the activities, and the and the peat and professional development. But the point is that um, if anybody wants us to, uh, wants some help or wants to know more about setting up a uh, an eagle van program, we could we could support by we could probably possibly give you guys some uh, starter lessons that you can do remotely. We can we could put some of those online. We, we can do that. And also um, some of those lessons are very, they're tailor-made for our own ecology, our own ecosystem here in LA. We're, we're Mediterranean dry climate and they, they may, you may need to tweak them for your particular area or issues confronting your community. In, in our case, we are dealing with, with um, we're anticipating a drought here in Los Angeles and fire season is ever more of an issue for us now. So we, that's something that uh, we, we're doing quite a bit uh, on fire ecology in the, in the future. That's amazing, Jerry. That's such a fabulous offer. Thank you very much for that. And, and I just want to maybe close with one other question to you about where do you see this going in the future as COVID is, is starting to get more manageable, to be more manageable? I know um, LAUSD has been investing in outdoor education um, recently even more than it had in the past. And I'm super excited to see that. And so just wondering if you can say just a brief, just briefly touch on that um, before we close and go to the breakouts. So in regards to LA Unified, uh, yeah, a, a recent resolution has been passed uh, and to expand outdoor education so that every fourth and fifth grader will have access to one of our overnight residential programs before they leave elementary school. That's the commitment that, uh, that the district has made to every child. And in regards to our eco vans, we, once we transition out of the LA Park Centers, we're going to, we're looking at options to visit school sites within the district to support science instruction. A lot of teachers, uh, science instruction in elementary especially is, uh, just to put it, to be blunt, is lacking. Uh, a lot of teachers don't have a science background in elementary school. So there are a few that do, and, and they do wonderful jobs with that. And, but many don't, and um, especially in the inner city where we get a lot of uh, new teachers. They're just trying to, to teach the, basic, uh, the basics and, and in English language arts and math. And when we bring in the, the, the eco vans, we're, in, we're hoping that it will ignite that interest, not only for the students in science and the outdoors, but also in the teachers to leverage that, not just, not just for science, but across curriculum. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Jerry, for sharing this really inspiring work that you're doing. It's incredible that the kids have access to beautiful places like this, which behind me is your Clear Creek Center right. um, and, um, and the EcoVan program and all the wonderful things that you're doing. Thanks so much for coming today and for sharing sharing it with us. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Big round of applause for Jerry. Thank you. Wonderful. And so now I think we'll transition with Andra to a brief breakout rooms. Yeah, we'll just do a really quick breakout room to give people a chance to process that even further. Um, Jerry, that was fantastic. And it was so great to, I'm sure people are feeling really inspired about the way that you all were able to think outside of the box and leverage partnerships. So we're just going to put you into some small breakout rooms, maybe um, Lauren, maybe just no more than three or four people in each room. And here's some conversation or here's some conversation starters, like what resonated with you, how my partnerships and thinking outside of the box be really critical to move this uh, work forward for your area. 
And then how might a focus on social emotional learning be critical for outdoor learning programs as you go into next year? So uh, hopefully those will be great questions for you all. And we'll just spend about eight minutes or so in the breakout rooms.